for. There was a 60 year old female patient that started an oil prednisone loan after diagnosis of giant cell arthritis. Two years later, she presented with neck of femur fracture. What is the most likely cause or predisposing factor? Um, okay, so the the old age and she's a female and uh, postmenopausal and the steroids. Again, these are nice. You said a nice answer, all right? Mm -hmm. But you want to elaborate what you're saying, okay? Okay. So, 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 Mohammed, I, I, I do really understand what you're saying because I think we started from very similar medical schools. So I know the way that we studied that you need to tend to know the titles and we act as if we understand each other, right? Mm -hmm. So the examiner, the examiner will not do that, okay? The examiner wants you to elaborate. So you want to say. Um, well, there are multiple factors here being a female and also being a um, sorry, a postmenopausal female does increase the risk having that she's going to be going through menopause and also the effect of estrogen and uh, the um, the bone will lead to osteoporosis. Second factor being on prednisolone for a very long time that will lead to uh, osteoporosis. That's one and two. Uh, increasing risk of avascular necrosis, all right? So you want to sort of elaborate what you're saying, okay? What are the pathological changes in osteoporosis? Uh, well, uh, in osteoporosis, there is decrease in the bone uh, volume, uh, de uh, decrease in bone mat uh, matrix, and uh, I think trabecular thinning and uh, perforation in the trabeculae. Um, whilst um, uh, osteoclastic activation, uh, which will uh, decrease the bone deposition. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so, so basically, the, the the key the key point to mention, I think all what you mentioned is correct, really. But the key point to mention is the 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 histologic, histologically the bone will decrease in quantity. All right. Decreased. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then postmenopausal, uh, like you said, the osteoclastic activity will increase. But the osteoblastic activity will sort of decrease and uh, the trabecular bone formation become perforated. All right, how would you find osteoporosis then? Okay, it's, so it's decrease in bone volume or bone matrix. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll give you a hint then. So it's a metabolic bone disease. It's characterized by, like you said, decrease on. Decre uh, characterized by decrease in the bone volume and uh, um, a decrease a decrease of loss of matrix and um, the uh, increased bone fragility. Yeah, and it happens due to? Uh, okay, so uh, it can happen due to malignancy uh, or uh, certain medications or endocrine uh, causes. So. Uh, so again, I, I don't like the fact that you were saying certain medications. OK, and and okay. then you stop there. You can't really stop there. You need to give me examples. Anti, you need to right, anti, anti medications. Mm -hmm. Certain medications like anti epileptic medications or uh, tumors like malignant bone tumors like ma multiple myeloma uh, yeah. or uh, certain endocrine uh, syndromes or uh, causes like uh, Cushing uh, syndrome uh, or uh, that's fine. I, I think, yeah, I think that's all right. But you, you're you trying to give me specific examples, which should be OK, not a problem at all. Uh, but basically, what I want to say is the definition, uh, metabolic bone disease, uh, decreased bone mass and micro architectural deterioration, and increased bone fragility and loss of bone matrix, OK? These are the key four points to mention, all right? All right, how can cortic steroid cause osteoporosis then? Um, so it will... Uh do uh, uh which will make osteoclastic uh, activation which will uh, increase the bone destruction and uh, decrease the deposition anything else uh, i think it has a mineral corticoid like action but it's quite irrelevant here um uh, i think yeah it will cause also avascular necrosis but this is completely unrelated to osteoporosis, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah so it's very, very, very simple. So it's all based on the calcium metabolism. 
the steroids will, you know, for calcium, and I've always remember this from medical school, you need to remember certain words, absorption, reabsorption, and resorption, all right? So for calcium, it will inhibit GIT absorption, and it will stimulate bone resorption. Resorption means, you know, decreasing the calcium load, all right? So increasing bone resorption, and decrease the renal reabsorption of calcium, and then direct inhibition of the osteoblast and inhibition of sex steroids as well, or the anabolic steroids. Okay. So right. What are, what are the causes? I think you mentioned the causes, but you need to give a specific example. Being the older age, postmenopausal, some medications such as steroids, uh, uh, and uh, anti-epileptic medications. Anti-epileptic and also uh, the PPIs as well can lead to that. Right, omeprazole can lead to that as well. And um, we mentioned the steroids are the most important. So primary, idiopathic senile postmenopausal, secondary to steroids. And also you mentioned some endocrinological causes such as Cushing, Allison, diabetes, hypothyroidism, pituitary tumors, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And anything that will lead to decreased calcium absorption, like, like gastrointestinal disease, will lead to that as well. What are the other, I mean, other causes would be very similar, so you don't need to worry about it. What's the main concern if the patient is going for surgery? This patient that we're talking about. So this patient is on steroids, so we should be, we would be concerned uh, for Addisonian crisis. Yeah. Again, I, I want to hear a little bit more about this. That's an interesting okay. thought. Okay. Tell me more. So uh, we sh we would be concerned for the Addisonian crisis due to the the stress of the trauma and the surgery, and um, that the patient is on steroids. So uh, the Addisonian crisis might happen, which is the unexplained shock, um, and uh, this might uh, might cause a I mean a threat to the patient's life. So we need to prevent this crisis. So here, here, I'm sorry, here, now you're just trying to fill the gaps, yeah. right? Yeah. So don't do that. Don't do that in the exam. Uh, so basically, you want to say like some, some actual words. So you, you would say, given that the patient has been an oxygenous steroid for a very long time, and currently they're undergoing stress, which is the surgery, there are at higher risk of Addisonian crisis, and which could be life-threatening, and I would like to double the dose of the current steroid, before moving ahead and doing the surgery. That's it. All right. So you're going to have to fill the gap and start saying, you know, it's going to affect the patient life and whatever. Just want to say very direct and sharp. You've been in a steroid for a very long time. That's oxygen to steroid. Sudden stop to that or going under stress will increase the risk of having Addisonian crisis, which we can cover in a second. All right. Addisonian crisis. Okay. How to prevent this crisis? Uh, like you mentioned, by doubling the dose of steroids and uh, converting to IV corticosteroids. Yeah, so you can double hydrocortisone or the fluidocortisone if the RM fluid route can stay the same and they can have IV as well. The patient underwent total hip replacement, died post operative die one. What's the commonest cause of death here? Uh, fat embolism. Yeah, fat embolism could be the cause in this particular scenario. Uh, that's right. Um, in terms of Addisonian crisis, given that we mentioned it, uh, what is the definition of that? Uh, so, um, Addisonian crisis will. Uh, okay, sudden. It's a decrease in the uh, catecholamines in the body, I think. Decrease in body catecholamines. If you think, don't say it, right? Yes. That's okay. the rule. If you if you know, yeah. go ahead and say it. If you think and you're not sure, just don't okay. say it. Okay. No, so it's an acute it. reduction, acute reduction or decrease in That's steroids. It. All right. Yeah. So how do you treat Addisonian crisis? Uh, by um, by giving uh, IV corticosteroids. By giving or... steroids, right? Yeah. By giving steroids. That that's the basic term. You give right. steroids because you have acute reduction in steroids, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so acute reduction of circulating steroids due to multiple reasons, could be primary and secondary. The primary, Addisonian disease, the adrenal glands is not working. Secondary, 
which could be oxygen yeah. assisted right for a very long time, that has suddenly no, stopped for no, patient no, undergoing no, surgical no. infection. All right, makes sense now. You know, when you read it, and I'm sure that this is what you're thinking now, you know the answer, right? Yeah. You already know the answer. You understand it really well, but you just need to say it in a coherent way, right? Yeah, it's, no, yeah. So, so again, the treatment is steroids. So yes, this is an acute reduction of steroid, which can happen for two reasons. The gland is not working, or the patient is dependent on oxygen as a steroid, when we suddenly stopped it, or patient undergoing stress. All right, as simple as that. What are the clinical features of this Arisonian crisis? Uh, okay, it will be a, a signs of unexplained shock and uh, abdominal pain and nausea and vomiting. Mm -hmm. and diarrhea as well, I think. Yeah, so abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, unexplained shock, hyponatremia, and hyperkalemia, which this is the part that you were worried to say it because yeah. you yeah. always confuse it, right? Mm. Yeah, so so if you have decrease in, uh, so basically here you have decrease in steroids, uh, and the steroids have mineral or corticoid effect. What is the mineral or corticoid effect? So uh, it will be salt and water retention, so it will be hypernatremia uh, and hypokalemia. Correct, yeah. And if this is decreased, so it will be the other way around, hyponatremia and hyperkalemia. Yeah, correct. All right, and how to prevent it? We said that already uh, higher cortisone and double the dose and management of the crisis. Supportive is the most important bit to mention, so giving your patient all, you know, the um, the IV fluids and getting the cannula in, uh, seeing all the secrets protocol and then administer higher cortisone, hydrate your patient. Okay. I think that will be it for today. Let me just stop recording there. All right, do you have any questions? No, thank you. Okay, perfect.